Let's see if we're going to go live. Connected. We're connected. I see something happen. ASMR. ASMR. Testing. Testing. Okay. I think we're good to go. Hey, y'all. We're live. All that stuff you were saying, Lewis, all that horrible stuff that you were saying, you need to stop because we're live now, okay? And if people hear that stuff, we're going to get in big trouble on YouTube. My lips are zipped. What's that? Zipped. <laughs> Exhibit A. Hey, everyone, shout out to you. Well, no one's commenting in the comments yet. If you want a shout out, I would love to give you one. Hope everyone's doing okay. <clears throat> Hope everyone's having a nice, relaxing day. You know, it's a stressful time. We were just having a bunch of laughs. And I, I honestly, I really needed those laughs. I really did. I can't repeat what was said because Leander said some stuff that would get us banned off YouTube forever and probably all <laughs> other platforms. But it was funny. <laughs> uh, shout out to Chase McLean. Shout out to Martin. Marty. We are going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. Believe it or not, we actually have a bunch of stuff to talk about this show. So that will be nice. we got some Apple news. We're going to talk about Tesla a little bit. We're going to talk about Apple Car a little bit. And we're going to talk about the Apple Glass a little bit. And then I'm going to talk about some really exciting charging technology that I genuinely am excited about. So we'll, we'll dive into that story first. If you guys want to shout out, hop into the chat and say hello. Oh, Schwedgate. Dude, my Schwedgate story, Lewis, yeah. is I did that video on YouTube. It just keeps growing. This is a legitimate problem. People are actually having problems with their AirPods Max. It's not fake. Yeah. Everyone accused me of doing something for, for clicks, and I was shocked <laughs> at that accusation. I never do anything for clicks. That was a real story, and I've had probably 15 people, maybe even 20 people, reach out to me and say they're finding ample water in their ear cups. <laughs> How do you define water? ample? I mean, you know. More than a couple drops. Uh, uh, equals... One drop is way more than enough. Well, I agree with you, but some of these people are finding like two to three drops. Some people are finding way more than that. You know, it's like, I was trying to think of someone who's really sweaty. It's like Steve Ballmer doing a Windows release on stage sweaty inside well, their AirPods, Max. You know, maybe this is by design. You know, they're, they're uh, what are they called? Uh, active noise cancellation, right? So the next time you get on an airplane and you're listening to the music for two, three hours, and you see, gee, I'm really thirsty, but I can't get the uh, flight attendant <laughs> to come around. Yes. By right. There you go. Have yourself a little refreshing <laughs> mug of ear sweat. <laughs> and technically, isn't it distilled? Because <laughs> the sweat... Yeah, it's good water. Yeah, it's like actually good water. It probably tastes like a mountain spring. I had never considered oh, yeah. that before. I'm sure it tastes exactly like uh, Fuji water. <laughs> it tastes like a mountain spring of a mountain goat just took a dump in it. Ay, yeah, yeah. All right. Shout out to Zach X. Hey, Zach. Hey. And everyone else that's joining us. Leander, what are you doing over there? You went Sorry, totally texting, silent. Texting, texting my wife. <laughs> you were making all these great jokes. It was Kenny uh, story time hour right before we went live. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden you went totally quiet. Uh, sorry, texting my wife. She keeps texting me, even oh, though I told wives. her. She phoned me up and I said, oh, you know, it's it's the uh, it's the cult cast podcast. Can't talk, uh, my love. Yeah. So <laughs> she starts texting. That's exactly how you said it, too. <laughs> I didn't say that. I've, I've never actually called that in my entire life. <laughs> you should start. Think how, think how delighted she'd be if you called her that. Tracy, is she a hopeless romantic? No, <laughs> not at all. She's the complete opposite. She's worse than I am. She's even more cynical and bitter. And... <laughs> more, more cynical and more bitter? Yeah, than I am. I don't, yeah. I don't believe you. Uh, okay, well, as everyone's piling in, a very merry hello, God, to Jeremy Edwards and... Did stuff. He says, long time listener. Happy to see faces. Ellipses. Kinda. <laughs> Happy to see this face. <laughs> what could you not love about about this face? I'm going full candy. What could you not love about that? <laughs> I made it even better. <laughs> what? Long time listener. Oh, wrong time viewer. <laughs> wrong time listener is what he meant to say. 
Um, okay. Sorry, people are now texting me too. And we got to do the cold cast. So we just should we just go ahead and start here? Let's just go ahead and dive in. Let me make sure that I've got my notes up here because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. In fact, all of a sudden, I feel like we have too much stuff to talk about this week. <laughs> and i got to make sure that I pull up my, uh, my stocks app because I, I want to show you guys some stock activity happening today. Oh, uh, let's see here. No, not more stock boasting. Uh, no, no, um, no, no. I'm not going to do any boasting. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Tesla's up 7% <laughs> today. <laughs> Tesla is up 7% today. Just, just look at this! Yeah. Th- look at this craziness. That is their three-month graph right there. Oh my! Is it, it's worth more than Toyota, Ford, GM, and every other car company in the world put together. Now, I think isn't it? so. I think you might be right. I mean, here, here's. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Here's Apple's three month, and then here is Tesla's three month. It looks like a freaking tsunami. Look at that tsunami of profit is what it is. Oh my gosh. Not a bubble at all. <laughs> I invested in the wrong company. Did well, you, the, don't you have any Tesla stock? I have zero Tesla. Full disclosure, zero Tesla. Although I, pff, the way things are going, I might soon. Although definitely buy at the top. Time to buy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now's the perfect it, it, time to buy. Up on go. Warren Buffett, yeah, uh, Elijah. <laughs> Get in there, jump in, uh, fun, both feet. What could go? Start, what could go wrong? <laughs> we can start a Tesla pump stock pumping podcast. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. That'd be some real profits in that. Right. Uh, okay. Let's go into start mode here. Let me pull up my start notes here, and we'll uh, we'll get going with the show like we're not already going with the show. Uh, oh, shoot. Where did the uh, – there they are. There they are. Okay. Hey, Mrs. Doubtfire, are you there? Yes. <laughs> we're ready for you. Okay. I'm going to need some with gusto this time because people really need some excitement. Okay. All right, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the Coldcast, the best 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfan Elijah. Joining me today, he's a great guy, a super good bike rider, lots of fun to be around, makes funny jokes. He's also the founder of Coltamac. Later, Kenny is here. How's that for what? an intro? <laughs> Yes, I say what? No, straight Does this forward. sound right? Also with us, he's a musician, a darts player. Everyone loves his fun personality. Don't even get me started on his smile. <laughs> he's the managing editor of Colton Mac. <laughs> Louis Wallace is here. That's more like it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see where we're headed. You know, I just figured we needed some good vibes today. <laughs> the Republic still stands. We're all still here for who knows how much longer. And I just was like, well, we just need some positive vibes today. You know, there's a lot going on. Lots of stuff to frown about, about, and I wanted to turn those frowns upside down. So that's what we're going to aim to do this show. we got a lot of Apple news to talk about. we got a lot of tech news to talk about. And we're just going to try and lighten the mood and just have a little bit of fun. No one's going to steal a lectern. <laughs> Although that was actually <laughs> hilarious. And we're just going to talk about <laughs> We're just going to have some fun and talk about the news and just try to Don't keep Don't you have a Viking hat lighthearted. you can put on? I wish I did. I was kind of hoping that one of you would show up shirtless with a fur coat on or open yeah. fur coat of the biking hat. What, why, does he look like Jam- why does he look like Jammer Acquire? Is that what his reference is to? I have no idea. I, I was calling him Davy Crockett on peyote. <laughs> yeah. um, Elon Musk tweeted, this is what happens when you cancel Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a good one. <laughs> that was Elon Musk. Uh, Funny. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. That was <laughs> I, I have to say, I did have a good chuckle at that one. Uh, let's see here. We got all sorts of Apple news to talk about uh, today and tech news, actually. There's all sorts of stuff. I mean, it seems like yesterday has been like a month long, but there was a whole week that preceded it. And so <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a bunch of stuff to talk about before everything started uh crumbling so before we uh dive in (laughs) let me just give a very hearty thank you to squarespace for supporting this episode i talk about squarespace a lot can i hit up browser mode here let's see does it work it does work look at that i got it prepared ahead of time if you are in need of a website squarespace.com forward slash cast it's the start of a new year you know new years are a great time to start a business it's a great time to improve your business 
It's a great time to take that idea that you have and do something with it. Maybe you want to sell a product or offer a service. Now is a killer time to start offering classes online. If you're really good at something and you can teach something to someone else, you would be shocked how much money people can make teaching classes. I, I've been doing some research on this, and it's wild. People making millions of dollars just teaching things that they know. And you could do this all on your Squarespace website because they allow you to set up well, they allow you to set up a way to have people schedule t time with you. So you could use this in a variety of ways. Like maybe you want to offer your massage services to people. You could do that and you could have your intake forms and everything attached to your services. Plus you can describe your services so that people know exactly what you're offering. Or maybe you are really good at stock trading like yours truly. And you want to teach people <laughs> how to do that and make huge <laughs> profits buying high and selling low like I do. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that on your website as well. You can offer products and services of all kinds. You could sell a physical product, a digital product, you name it. You could do a blog. You could just have a simple website to promote your skills and your skill set to get that new job that you want. Maybe you're going to be graduating sometime soon or something. All that is included on your Squarespace website. And you can get started today at squarespace.com forward slash cultcast, squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. Build a site. See how you like it. Use code cultcast at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. And if you do a year of purchase, which is what I do, you get an, addi an additional discount on top of the discount you'll get with code ColtCast at checkout. So it's a great deal. Squarespace.com forward slash ColtCast. Okay. Let's see here. Back into partial Earth view. If you guys want me to go full Earth, let me know. Shout out to all of our listeners that are here. Looks like we got some new people. Brooks is here. Steven is here. And Jammin. I always love it when Jammin shows up. And uh, let's dive into the first story today. Apple Car. Now, look, before you drive off, because <laughs> I feel like most people don't care about Apple Car news, I'm going to tie this into a story today about Elon Musk, which I thought was actually a really interesting story. So, first of all, the story as it goes with Apple Car, Apple Car would only need about 2% of, of the mobility market to equal iPhone revenue. So think about that. If they only got 2% of the mobility market, that would be that would equal all of the revenue that they're getting for the iPhone. I'm trying to find this story right here, and uh, I want to bring it up in browser mode. Hold on a sec. I should have done this ahead of time, but that's the way it goes today. H hitting up browser mode in three, two, one. No, it's not working. There we go. So check this out. Apple would only need to capture 2% of the mobility market when a possible Apple Car with a possible Apple Car to equal the revenue that it gets from the iPhone, according to Morgan Stanley re researchers. While that's certainly easier said than done, it's an interesting observation when considering Apple's chances of turning its automotive plans into a financial win windfall. In the report, quote, most cite Apple's strong brand and an impressive balance sheet as the reason to build an Apple car, the analyst said, according to a transcript of the call. But we see several other reasons why it is likely that the Apple car, that Apple will do a car, excuse me. One is the size of the market. Now, this is interesting, and I had no idea. Smartphones are a $500 billion annual business, or annual market, I should say. Apple has about one-third of that market. The mobility market is a $10 trillion market. So Apple Whoa. would only need 2% share of this market to be the size of the iPhone business. Mobility, who knew it was that large? I certainly didn't. And check this out. Uh, as of today, as of today, Elon Musk is now the richest person in the world. I'm going to pull up this tweet. So he beat out Jeff Bezos and is now the richest person there. I think he's, like, he's worth like uh, 188 billion now. Yeah, and 190, 190 billion. Well, that was Shh. earlier today before the stock continued going up. Shh. And what I find really interesting about this is, you know, Jeff Bezos has this massive company with all these different services. Think about all the things that Amazon does, right? They're into everything. They're a giant platform for retailers worldwide. And all Elon Musk does, well, he does a lot, but the focus of Tesla <laughs> is just selling cars. That's all they do. That's the no, one thing not, that he no, does. He no sells cars. Deal. And uh, he is now worth more than than why did, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, go ahead. Why did it pop today, the, the Tesla stock? <laughs> why today? I have no idea. Because he's so rich. 
it, <laughs> let me just show this again. For those of you that are tuned in before we officially started, let me just show this. This is Tesla's... Well, first, I'm going to show this. This is Apple stock price the last three months, right? It's going up, but it's going sideways, right? This is Tesla's stock price. Now, for those of you listening, it looks like a freaking skateboard ramp that goes straight up into heaven. It is just a line that's going straight up. It looks like a freaking tsunami wave. And I don't know why Tesla just keeps going up. Well, People a couple of days Tesla. ago, um, some influential Tesla um, YouTube channel, uh, he drove his, um, his car drove up from Southern California to Northern California, Santa Clara somewhere. I heard that. Um, yeah, completely aut autonomously. And this full self-driving mode, which a lot of people say is, you know, kind of misleading. Um, but apparently, he, you know, he only took over to uh, recharge the car. Mm -hmm. um, so he, it, it took him about like a minute to drive into the charging lot. Um, but that was it. The, the, the rest of the time was totally autonomous. But that was a couple of days ago. So I wonder why it's popping, you know, today. Oh, Market Watch says it's because there's hopes of a blue Senate. They're hoping to get in on all that. Hopes? That's like a sure thing oh, now. Oh, so it's going to help. Yeah, ho hopes that a blue Senate will be a potential game changer for the Silicon Valley electric car maker and right. other EV and alternative energy companies. Yeah, 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 yeah. According they, to Market Watch, they'll have um, they'll put subsidies back, right, and stuff like that for the cars. Right. Ah, right. So, yeah, and the, uh, a couple of days ago, I mean, um, there was a report saying that in Norway. Um, uh, electric cars now account for 54 percent of all new car sales which wow. is the first time in any country that it's been, that they, they're selling more electric cars than um traditional ice cars you know internal combustion engine cars that's a pretty good landmark i mean if norway's like that if norway's at 50 percent already you know you can see the potential for it can't you <laughs> how big is norway huh how, how big is norway what's the longest drive you take there i don't know it's a it's it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty, pretty big tall country isn't it it's long. It's long, long and tall. <laughs> yeah, and freezing. <laughs> long, tall, and freezing. I, I, Norway. That should be on I the shirt. That, <laughs> I thought that uh, electric cars didn't perform as well in, in really cold weather. Am I wrong about they that? They don't. They I, don't. Uh, yeah, but I guess you know. I don't know. Maybe People they got seem some, not to uh, care about that, or they seem to not know about that. I mean, it's not electric cars. It's just batteries don't perform well in really cold weather. And because uh, I was thinking about buying a Nissan Leaf for a while, and this is one of the main com complaints I've heard about Teslas as well is as the batteries get older, they don't perform as well, right? So you lose range, but then also in cold environments, you lose range because batteries don't like to be cold. I don't know if this affects Teslas as much as, do as it does Nissan Leafs, but like the Nissan Leaf, when I was looking at them, the range was like 80 miles, but then you take into account cold weather range and it was maybe 55 or something. <laughs> and so, you know, you go 25, 30 miles and all of a sudden your car is like, you have 20 miles left. Better not go up a hill because then it'll be 15 and so it just kind of irked me. But uh, Stephen Huxtable, first of all, I'm honored that we have one of the Huxtables here in the chat. He says that um, that Tesla's lack build quality. Have you guys heard this? Because I have. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard reports like that. I've, I've never even actually been in one, though. You haven't? You've never been in Tesla? No. You live in Silicon Valley? Well, I, I live I've in never been in one either. San Francisco. What? Isn't San Francisco part of Silicon Valley? Oh, they're everywhere, and I, I hate Teslas. I hate Teslas, and I hate Tesla drivers. To be honest, because you can't, because you can't. Well, hear the them drivers, yeah. Up on you. As a bike rider, they Tesla drivers, you. they're they're the worst. They're the Why worst drivers. It's like Prius drivers too. They're also terrible. Because they're they're they're, they're, they're a s s h o l e s. They they have this sort oh. of sense of um, entitlement, you know, where they just sort of pull out. However, they and they drive however they like because they're driving a Tesla. <laughs> you know, get out of my way, you filthy paws. Uh, it has this just like they're, they're inconsiderate drivers. Uh, and as a bike rider, you know, like every time some car pulls close to me or, or does something goofy, oh, it's a Tesla. What a surprise! <laughs> I had no idea. There, I mean, it's, it's just so know, much. It's so easy to go fast in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure they're. You know they're awesome, uh, um, and my son is obsessed with them, and with um, Elon Musk too. He actually read his biography, uh, which is kind of weird because he's only written about he's only read about two books in his entire life. Um, Your son or Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh, not my he's... son. No, that was a complete lie. He's oh. he's he's a bookworm. But he um, yeah, I thought it was kind of weird that he read a he read the whole thing, the whole biography, and he's obsessed with Teslas. He wants me to buy it. At, you know, he wants us to buy a, a Model Three. Um, Do it. But, then no. I'll get to drive one. Dude, the Model 3s are cool, Leander. I don't know if you've ever been in one, but they're a lot of Have fun. Have you? Yeah, yeah, I've been in one before. 
and they're beautiful cars. The the heating and cooling system, everyone's heard of endlessly about this. I'm not going to describe it, but it's really cool. Just how there's like no vents anywhere, and all of a sudden there's like this wave of air going over your head. Where does it come from? Under the seats? Uh, so, oh, you don't know this? Wow. Okay, so there is no vents on the front dashboard. There's just like this one single mono vent, and I guess somehow they direct the airflow internally to shoot it like a wave of air wherever you want to point it. But there's no like adjustable vents. It's pretty cool. It's kind of weird. They're they're beautiful cars, like I said, and they're a lot of fun to drive. And they're actually affordable, which is why they probably sell so many of them. Like I don't do people even buy Model S's anymore? I feel like everyone just buys Model Threes. That's literally all I see around my neighborhood are all Model Threes. But uh, I had a reason for bringing this up. <laughs> it does link to Apple. When I saw that Elon Musk could become the richest person on Earth just by owning a large share of Tesla. I was like, dude, there is absolutely no way Tim Cook, TC, is not going to get into this into this Apple car game. They have a ability to come in and really take a large chunk of market share away from Tesla. In fact, if anyone can do it, I think Apple could. I'm not even sure Apple could unseat Tesla at this point. Tesla is so beloved by everybody, and especially by the government, regulators, but car fans, car enthusiasts... I just don't think anyone's gonna is gonna unseat them, but Apple can make a dent. And even if they made a small dent, this would be, it seems to me like the biggest market that Apple could enter into, and maybe the biggest market they've ever entered into. It's gonna be bigger than phones, it's gonna be bigger than computers, it's gonna be bigger than the app store, it's gonna be bigger than everything. I mean, well, I had no idea question. how profitable it was. That was my question about this report. It's like they say a ten, it's a ten trillion mobility market, but you know, does that include I mean that's a pretty Big, yeah, it's a vague uh, term. Yeah, right. Is it? Does that include airplanes? You yeah, know, um, that's what I was thinking. Jumbo jets. Oh, that's uh, like, ships. Yeah, uh, scooters, like, bird yeah. scooters. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> roller skates, skates, everything. Yeah. Skateboards, Skate bicycles, <laughs> Sk skateboards, uh, roller skates. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. Like, what, what's the what's the you know the car market? But I I, I, know, I know the car market itself is 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 a pretty big business. I mean, it's like. Is it one of the biggest businesses in the U.S.? Just just cars, I think it is. I'm not sure. I, what I think is weird, and other people have pointed this out. So, like, check this out. So, Tesla is now worth their their market capitalization is 768 billion dollars. Dude, they've doubled in the last two months. They've doubled in the last two months. God, I, invest, I invested in the wrong stock. No. I'm, kick, I'm kicking myself every time I look at their stock chart. I'm like, I'm kicking myself. I'm like, I invested in the wrong company. Um, but let's see, how much is Toyota worth right now? Let me see if I can bring them up. Toyota. Uh, there we go. Okay, so how is this possible? Tesla is worth $768 billion, but Toyota is only worth $211 billion. How does that work? Toyota, Toyota is ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They make trucks. They make... Well, go ahead. Well, they don't have electric cars, do they? Do they have, does Toyota have an electric car? Well, they've yeah. got... Oh, the Prius. Hybrid, what am I right? talking about? Yeah. The Prius plug-in. Oh, yeah, those are flying off the shelves here in Seattle. Oh, I hate those Is it a plug-in? <laughs> I think they have a plug-in model, yeah. I believe they do have a plug-in model. But uh, I guess my only point is, is, is Tesla, are they selling more cars than Toyota? Oh. Clearly they're not. But they're, so, they're providing drivetrains, aren't they, to a whole bunch of um, uh, companies, right? Who is? Tesla? Tesla. Don't they do the drivetrains for some other companies? I, I had to heard do. that. That they would license, be smart business. And I think they license a bunch of stuff too, a bunch of their technology. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Plus, um, people are saying that they're all the data. That's what's the most valuable. Is like they've got they've been driving all the fleet of cars, all the data they've been gathering um, on the roads. Mm -hmm. That's their most valuable asset. I heard people, you know, um, Robert Scoble keeps on going on about that. That sounds like something people from Silicon Valley say, but it's not actually true. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's right. like the value of the. Of the cars driving around is worth more than the you know profit margins on the actual I don't cars know, themselves. There's something to be said for it. I mean, they're building these re really detailed 3D maps, you know, um, and that is key to self-driving technology. Yeah. Uh, and if they can crack, you know, I mean, if they've got, and it's like a, you know, it's sort of like App, uh, Google's lead over Apple in mapping. You know, Google had a good ten, was it ten or ten years or more on Apple and all the you know the data. Uh, although Apple's been chipping away at that, and Apple's maps are getting good, but. It took a long time for Apple's maps to cat to be even, you know, anyway, even a fraction of the utility of Google, didn't it? And that's that's a data story. So the same thing is true of of maybe with with Tesla. You know, maybe they've maybe all the data they've got is gives them a a moat 
you know, a few years advantage over a, a company like Apple, you know, which which is a new entrant to the market. I don't know if that's true, but it, you know, it's interesting. I hate to uh, throw cold water on this, but I just looking at something that says that the global automotive motors market size is projected to grow from twenty billion in twenty twenty to twenty five billion in twenty twenty five. So what did they cram into that mobility? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we were right about the roller skates. Because <laughs> they said ten trillion, right? That is a yeah, lot higher. Some, than... it was, yeah, it's a lot higher than twenty billion, isn't it? Regardless, I mean, doesn't an Apple car seem like something that Apple would definitely get into? That market space, Leander, it's a, a huge marketplace where well, they can make a big difference. Yeah, this I think this debate has been going. You know, the, uh, uh, this debate has been going on for 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 a while. I mean, you know, after the iPhone started to become a hit, you know, like around two, 2010, 2012, people were looking, speculating about you know what will Apple get into next, and they were talking about TVs and refrigerators or whatever. You know, <laughs> refrigerators. And, and I would love to see that. I remember doing a story that uh, looked at this, and and transport was like one of the biggest markets. You know, that they have next to, um, uh, uh, you know. Uh, it's it's a big big market. There's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of money sloshing around, you know. So, it did make sense that they would get into that because I mean, you know, they, what's going to move the needle for Apple? You know, they have to get into a business where there's a lot of money is being spent. That's right. And what other markets are this big and this ubiquitous? I can't think of one. This is this seems like the biggest market other than healthcare. This seems like the biggest market that they could possibly get themselves into. And like Energy. I said. Energy could be another one. I don't think they're going to be doing any Apple nuclear plants anytime soon. Although that would be interesting. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that would be that would be interesting for sure. Uh, but you got to have cool factor to sell electric cars. I feel like, and Tesla's got that. Like, you got to come out. You got to be young. You got to be cool. That's why I think not even Apple would probably unseat Tesla because they're a cool company, but they feel like they're kind of an older company now, right? They're not as risque or as rebellious as Tesla is. And they're going to come into the space, and they'll probably have a great product, but they don't really have that cool factor that Tesla has, not like Rivian has, because they're brand new, or some of the other electric car companies. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting, and to see Elon Musk become the richest person on Earth just by having this one business, I'm like, this is definitely going to happen. At some point, Apple's definitely going to release an, an Apple car. Um, speaking of other Apple products that people might be interested in, Lewis, we got some updates on Apple's AR glasses. Is that right? That is correct. We got a couple of new reports this week to make it sound like they're coming this year. Uh, first is um, from good old reliable TF International Securities analyst Ming Chi Kuo. <laughs> Excellent pronunciation he, on that, by the way. Uh, yeah, who knows? Uh, <laughs> He said that Apple plans to release a augmented reality device in 2021. Not, and that was it was kind of like a line buried in a report that he he put out this week. So it's not like he didn't say glasses, but I mean that's kind of the that's everybody's best guess, right? Right. And he, he's been talking about this before. I mean, it's just like the latest update. Hey, it's still happening. And uh, there's another report. This come from comes from Digitimes and said that. Uh, Prototype Apple Glass augmented reality glasses are about set to enter the second phase of production. And uh, this is citing industry sources, you know, not not supposedly Apple insiders, but uh, it made it sound like it's like closer to reality than I, for one, have been thinking it might actually be. Well, if they like, have it... Sounds like they're cranking them up. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like, right? Is It sounds like they might be getting ready to manufacture these, which means yeah, they're right. developing them. Right, Leander? Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. I mean, this is what they're saying. The language is a bit weird, I think, that the Digitimes uses, but, you know, they're, they're getting ready to make these in factories. So, um, and, and Digitimes tends to have its sources in the supply chain, in the factories. So, you know, th th that makes sense for them to get the, these leaks. Um uh, and and together with Ming Chi Kuo, yeah, it looks like it's a it's a it, you know it, it looks pretty likely that we'll see these uh, this year. Do, do you know what second phase means? No, the, I I was I, I you know when I looked at it, I was like, what are they talking about? But I think you know, um, no, not exactly. But I think yeah. you know what they're talking about is that it's it's becoming it's it's now it's not a prototype any longer. It's now you know becoming it's for a, real. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a real pro. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just 
really interested to see what the use case is for these and how they're going to pitch them. The reason that AR hasn't really taken off, I don't think, is because there's not a lot of practical uses for them. And you could use them for games and that type of thing. But most of the production or most of the applications that I've seen have been in business situations. So you're visualizing factory floors and moving things around and that type of thing. Or you're getting real-time information because you work on an assembly line and you need to know something about a product that you're looking at. But as far as like actual useful, practical stuff for consumers, I haven't seen very much information out there that makes these look compelling. So I'm really curious to see because Tim Tim Cook is like gung ho about these. Every time he speaks about them, his face lights up, and so well, every time he speaks about making him excited, AR, right? augmented reality, right? He has, yeah. has he even ever actually said we're making glasses? No, that, that that's. <laughs> I mean, we assume they are. It sounds like they are, but he's never said it, right? He just keeps talking about how great AR is and how many amazing applications AR has. I, I yeah I, I was I was having a conversation with people in Slack the other day about this. I, I'm skeptical that you know being a lifelong glasses wearer, I'm skeptical that anybody that doesn't have to wear glasses actually would would put them on their face. But then somebody says, oh well, people wear sunglasses. Like, okay, well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I it's the only thing that I've been able to think of is like walking down a sidewalk in a city you don't know and having having a thing that says here, turn right here, as opposed to like staring at your phone and trying to look at a, a physical map i mean that could actually be unbelievably helpful um plus spotting uh aliens aka ella they live <laughs> oh <laughs> right so, yeah well if they do that i definitely want a pair yeah, right so he's <laughs> a lizard person yeah and then of course you can see the real meaning of all the ads you look at too consume buy 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 consume watch tv i well, like the idea of uh it popping up the name and you know the the name and and information about people that you know from your yeah, contacts yeah. At, at when you're at a party you know one of these horrible parties where you're like oh my god I know I I can't remember their name assuming I ever go to another party in my life <laughs> that's right with face recognition built in yeah yeah that I was just gonna say the same though. thing like the one killer feature would be like hey that here's a face here's that person's name if they just give me that one feature <laughs> and maps I'm like okay here's my five hundred bucks that's the one feature that I really could actually use is just remembering people's names well uh, the, the other day, i mean you know, the the the, uh, the possibilities for automating um all kinds of processing are, 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 are visually is kind of amazing i mean like you know the camera already does in the iphone doesn't it i mean you can get it to um all the accessibility stuff that's already built in you know so blind people can it'll tell you when a face is in the frame and it'll focus in on the face because it's recognizing faces um the other day uh my AirPods, you know, when I was on my bike, they stopped. And I was like, what the heck? Uh, and I could hear a siren. And then I realized um, I turned on the accessibility feature for it to listen out huh, for certain really. things. And so when there was a – and, of course, I had it on noise cancelling, so I couldn't hear a thing. And then suddenly you hear these sirens. And I'm like, damn, that's a really great feature. That's really, really clever. And huh. it'll do it as well for, like, things like fire alarms and telephones, anything that you want to be alerted to. You know, your AirPods are listening out for that. And it'll silence the audio so you can hear it. I, I was blown away. I thought this is really clever. But you could do that visually, you know, like if, if it can look and recognize things in the environment. I think there's a ton of applications, a ton. In fact, I think it's going to, you know, like I think Cook's right. It is going to be as astonishing because it's going to overlay the digital world over the, over the, you know, the analog, the real world, isn't it? Yeah, and you won't even need to have a Mac anymore, right, Lewis? No need for a Mac. <laughs> you are you the just, king of segways, aren't you? just got a virtual one right there on your desktop, eh, Lewis? Oh, my God. I guess you're tired of talking about the pod. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to move it along. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we actually we saw this uh, thing this week. This, this designer, his name is Dominic Hofacker, 24 years old, landed a job at Facebook. And he came up with this amazing concept of what a, a – iMac, or, well, I guess I guess he called it an iMac or a Mac would look like if basically it was all augmented reality. Hey, wait, 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 Lewis, iMac, E Y E Mac. <laughs> How about that? Oh, clever. Huh? Huh? There you go. Yeah. So, uh, go so <laughs> but so he 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 cooked up this concept. It's really pretty well thought out and cool looking, and it's it's based on it, you know, being powered by augmented reality glasses, and. uh 
you know, it's it's hard to describe, but it's it's very much like you know, this is the, the cliche. It's like a minority report thing, right? But the you know, the browsers here floating in the air. The I think the dock is at the bottom, floating in air. And you know, he he actually on his website has a, a well. I guess does he have the video on his? We have the video on our site. I'm playing has, the video on, right now, by the way, and I'll link site, to it in the yes, show notes. This is actually really cool. Of, uh, lots of things, you know, showing the way that you would interact with this. It seems really well thought out, you know, like you can see like a a virtual finger pointing at a, um, you know, icons and to open apps and things like that. Uh, and, and so we had a little interview with him, uh, and he said, with AR glasses on the verge of release and eventually replacing our smartphones for almost. I can't read it because it's covered up by some stupid window on our website. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I just edit that out, would you? Um, yeah, no problem. Real time. Oh, it's great. gone. Great, yeah. Uh, and he says, uh, he asks himself, what does productivity look like in the future? And uh, he can't, you know, Glass OS that runs on Apple Glass is one thing, but nobody ever thought about the next generation of Macs. I, I don't know if that's 100% true. I think maybe somebody else might have thought of the next generation of Macs. But he did come up with this really cool thing. And it, it's, I mean, it's hard to discuss because it's so visual and yeah. it's so kind of beautiful. You know, he's got a virtual keyboard in, on the, you know, laying on, on top of a desk. Um, typical looking kind of Mac screen, web browser, dock. A uh, little control panel, things like that, and he shows how you might be able to interact with it, you know, virtually. I I, I thought it was a really interesting thing to read about on Monday morning. Yeah, the first day cool. of the new year. And, and this, the video, the video is really worth uh, just checking out. You know, I watched the video and it, and it really brings it alive. And you can see that, oh wow, yeah, this actually looks like something you might want to use. It is actually really quite a compelling sort of computing environment. I, I, I you know, it totally sold me. Unlike uh, I've seen other AR demos and. I haven't been really that impressed. This is one of the most impressive ones I've seen. And I could totally see how if you had a trackpad and you could just point to things virtually and then use your keyboard and stuff to interact with this stuff kind of floating in space. He did a really good job here, actually. Is that a, uh, is that a virtual touch bar that I see there? <laughs> No, 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 that's not. It's just a regular. Okay, I was like, wait a second. Are you sure? It does look like it a kind of does touch look like a virtual bar. touch bar, doesn't it? Yeah, which uh, extra credit. People would be him. horrified. Is it, is it virtual butterfly keys or <laughs> is it the thing, the keys stick? And if you actually don't type work? that, you'll be typing on a, a hard piece of wood or whatever, and be almost virtually the same as a butterfly keyboard. That's actually a great <laughs> point. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be literally the same thing. So yeah, uh, definitely a pretty cool imagination or imagining of what virtual reality or augmented reality i guess i should say could could look like if you have like a virtual computer of some kind that actually might be really cool especially if you're in a place outside of your office like a starbucks or something and assuming those are ever open again you could go <laughs> to a coffee shop remember when people used to do that those are the good old days and like work from there and actually have all these screens open everywhere that would even if you just got the screens that would be crazy like if you had an ar virtual display so you're you're in a coffee shop and you're on your MacBook, right? But then you have a huge virtual display that you could like move windows to while you're working. That would be a killer feature. That would be a killer feature. Uh, Someone, one yeah, of the readers ahead. on, uh, so, sorry, uh, on the post though pointed out that um, he was a bit skeptical because he doesn't see Apple. Um, you know, Apple's a hardware company, right? Uh, oh, right. Uh, so he was kind of skeptical that they, they would phase out the hardware in, in lieu of one of these and something like this. He probably only works with the iPhone. 14 pro max plus <laughs> plus if you have an apple watch and the head uh, uh, AirPod yeah, max yeah. headphones you are going to have to have the otherwise uh, it the won't glasses yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah exactly you'll have to have all the accoutrements too i don't see them phasing out the hardware this will definitely be something that complements your hardware i don't think we're going to be getting rid of the mac anytime soon in in lieu of the uh the eyeglass or whatever they end up calling it um okay let's look, let's see here before we move on let me give a quick thank you to NordVPN for supporting this episode. Get secure and private internet access, or access to the internet, excuse me. A VPN provides you a secure encrypted tunnel for online traffic to flow. Nobody can see through the tunnel and get their hands on your precious internet data. NordVPN is the best VPN if you're looking for peace of mind when you use public Wi-Fi, access personal and work accounts on the road, and want to keep your browsing history to yourself. And you can protect all your devices. There's a NordVPN app for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, even Android TV. And uh, also, there is a uh, 
proxy extension for Chrome and Firefox. And you can access all of these different apps with one NordVPN account, and you can secure up to six devices at the same time. They have super fast servers, 5,200 servers in 59 countries. You can unlock Netflix and your favorite entertainment websites. Uh, and you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, no data logging, and up to six simultaneous connections, not just six total. And double data encryption for increased anonymity and we have a special deal for cultcast listeners go to nordvpn.com and use the coupon code cultcast at checkout to get a fr- to get a two-year plan i almost said a free two-year plan the two-year plan is not free oh, but hey. you get a huge discount and you get a you get a free additional one month at nordvpn forward slash cultcast and then use the coupon code cultcast to get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus one additional month for free that's nord n-o-r-d vpn slash cultcast and be sure to use the code Coltcast to get the discount and the one additional month for free. All righty. Where are we? Let's take a look here. Oh, Leander, do you want to do your um, quick environmental update that you were talking about real fast? Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, talking about electric cars and the environment, you know, Apple has long been committed to um, to the environment. And I think it's done some remarkable work. Uh, in a regulatory filing, um, Apple made it clear to executives that it won't be enough to simply talk about protecting the environment. Starting this year, the amount of cash bonuses they get will be impacted on how much, how well each of the executives live up to Apple values. And of course, one of these is the environment. Um, a- Apple has, uh, I think on its website, like seven values, inclusion and diversity, the environment, worker supply responsibility, uh, privacy, accessibility, and a couple of others. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's pretty good, though. You got almost all of them, I think. Money pile was money pile on the list. <laughs> don't forget money pile. That's one yeah, of the highest don't, ones. Don't start asking me now. Now I want to go look for it because this is the basic. This is the whole. This is a. This was the the um the whole the heart of my book about Tim Cook. You know, with the seven values that he's been um, promoting internally at Apple. Uh, and um, anyway, this is a real commitment to it. Now you know they they're saying Apple's values are really important in how much the executives uh, get compensated. So they have a compensation committee. That has um, they can up or they can uh, increase or decrease um, the bonuses each year, uh, depending on how well they live up to the, these values. I'm going into browser mode again. Check this out. Um, I saw this crazy story this week about this monster wind turbine. Have you guys heard anything about this? Oh, yeah, 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 I read that story. Yeah, yeah. dude, this thing is oh wild. So there is some enormous new prototype windmill that GM is working on. I'm just going to pull up this graph, and it shows the windmill. <laughs> the windmill. I feel like that's kind of a weird word for it, but that's essentially what it is, right? It's a windmill yeah. in uh, comparison to other structures, and it is going to be a total of 853 feet tall, which makes it almost twice as high as the London Eye Ferris wheel and almost as tall as the Empire State Building, a windmill that is almost as tall as as the Empire State Building. And the plan is to put these things out at sea where the wind is strong and uh, to create energy and, of course, chop all the birds into finally uh, finally <laughs> floating pulp. <laughs> there's just going to be a sea of bird beaks everywhere. Because if, uh, if you fly through this, there's, uh, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> but the crazy part is, is they say that in good conditions – this windmill can generate enough power to light a small town of up to 12,000 homes at one time. I wonder if that's all the electricity use or just lighting it. If it's like, oh, that's just the light bulbs and they've got to be LED. Otherwise, it's going to be like 1,000. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seems like marketing speak. Yeah. But in any yeah, case, it's an impressive feat. What were you going to say, Leander? No, no, no. That was it. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, yeah it's, it's crazy. That, that You know, like all over Europe, in- England, uh, weirdly enough, is a big leader in like offshore wind power, they've been building a lot of uh, uh, offshore um, wind farms. Uh-huh. And one of the biggest ones, I think, they were looking at this one to, to go in um, for, for one of their offshore wind farms. It's really taken over, you know, it, and it's good It's good to um, combine with um, solar, you know, because people say, oh, solar, you know, like what happens at night? Um, well, the wind often picks up at night. So if you have a, uh, oh. you know, if you have solar and then you have wind, yeah. it's actually pretty good complementary technologies uh, to, to create, you know, sort of 24 um, seven renewable energy. Well, this thing looks like it will be able to, uh, to, to pump it out. So uh, it's just interesting if you follow uh, renewable energy at all to see how fast things are progressing. I thought this was really funny because they've had small windmills forever, right? And they don't create a lot of power. 
And I'm like, didn't anyone think like, hey, let's just make it bigger? <laughs> it's like, well, I think it, seem kind of it ain't easy because like, the, the stress is on the things, you know, that ah. uh, the bigger they get, the harder it is to maintain structural integrity. Uh-huh. Um, and so the, the blades on this thing have got to be rigid. I mean, they can't flap around, which is the danger you get when it when it gets bigger. So uh, it's and, and of course, they have to they have to be light enough to be able to be mounted on a pole. So I think that was the the uh, the challenge was the structural integrity of the thing. I have you a have picture up right now up to hurricanes. Oh, well, there's that. Yeah, I don't want to be anywhere near this thing when there's a uh, strong windstorm. Yeah, I'm going to keep my distance. I have a picture up of the um, one of the, what do they call this? They call it a rotor, I guess, which is one of the things. It's like one of the propellers, I guess, for us laymen. And this thing is absolutely freaking massive. Like, look, look how high up this thing is. And it's not even at the apex of its arc, right? It's like off to the side. So it's it an absolutely like massive structure. Airplane wing or something. It does kind of look like it. Yeah, it looks like if you're sitting next to the airplane wing and you're looking out, it looks like that except like twice as long. So anyway, um, cool news there. Let's move on to something else that has to do with power. Now look, does anyone care about Apple charging bricks? <laughs> I thought yeah. this was I my favorite topic. It is. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I have got a great topic for you guys. I have been doing some a little bit of testing on Apple. Well, not just Apple, but just charging bricks in general. Okay. And I present to you Exhibit A. This is the charger for my 16 inch MacBook Pro, right? So it's 96 watts. And the strange thing is, is this has been like one of the only chargers that you can get for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. For quite a long time, because the 16-inch MacBook Pro, the, the last generation MacBook, I think, needed 85 watts. The 16-inch needs 96 watts if you want to use it and charge it fully at the same time at full speed. And there was just nothing else on the market that could do 96 watts. And I kept thinking to myself that this is so strange. How come no one else is releasing any equipment that can compete with Apple's charger? They charge $80 for this. And even docks. So if you have a dock, most likely, almost certainly, it only provides 85 watts of power. It might do 87 watts. They try to eke out a little extra power there. But it probably doesn't do the 96 watts that your computer needs. But there is a new technology out called gallium nitride. And it has enabled these charging systems to become much smaller, more energy efficient, and allowed them to run cooler. And so this... This is the Apple charging block that I'm holding up right now. You can see I'm going to hold up another charger here. This is one from Aki that I've been testing out. This Aki charger is literally half the price, actually less than half the price of this Apple charger. And this Aki charger is able to crank out 100 watts. 100 watts! And this can only do 96. It's about size. half the size, too. Yeah. So I'm going to hold it up now so you guys can see. Sorry to all of our listeners here, but that's why you've got to tune in to the... Uh, the video on Cultimac, Cultimac YouTube channel. So you can see, yeah, it's literally like, I don't know, what, what would you say that is? Like half the size? Yeah, it's about well, half. Two, two no. thirds, maybe. Maybe two yeah. thirds. Okay. But, you know, significantly smaller, significantly lighter, and four watts more powerful than this. Now, let me show you this. Oh, I got something else here. I got receipts here, okay? Receipt. This is the iPad charger. Well, it used to come with the iPad, right? This is 12 watts. Okay. This is the new Anker 20 watt charger that I'm holding up right here. Look how small this is. So this new Anker, I keep calling it Anker because they're a German. I thought they were a German company. <laughs> well, they are a German company. Excuse me. They, they are a German company, but they're pronounced Anker. But in my mind, I always call them Anka because I like to say <laughs> it with a German accent in my mind. And I, my brain will not let me say it normal ever since I made that joke. Uh, so this is the new Anker 20 watt charger. You can see this 20-watt charger is the same size as the previous 5-watt uh, iPhone charger. And I would say probably, I don't know, one-third the size, maybe half the size of the, of the iPad charger, the 12-watt uh, iPad charger. So look at the difference in size. So this small one is 20 watts, and this big one is 12 watts. And the reason I bring this up is because, A, these are great chargers. This is the, um, I'll give them a plug. This is the uh, Anchor PowerPort 3 Nano. I'll link to this in the show notes if you want to check it out. I've been using this on my iPhone. It's great, 20 watts, which means it charges your iPhone super fast. And then this other one is the 
Aki uh, doesn't say what the model is on here. That's a bummer. I'll have to uh, put that in the show notes. It's a, it's an Aki 100 watt charger, but they don't put the model name on here. Oh no, here it is. It's the PA85 or the PA B5. They write that so what? small that I can barely see it. The, the it's PA funny you should bring B5. these up. Why is that? We just uh, we just ran a review this week of uh, uh, is it Aki? Did you it see it's Aki? Aki? I thought it was Aki. <laughs> anyway, uh, the I hope Omnia it's Aoki. Mix Three 90 <laughs> watt three port PD charger, oh. it, and it's got in addition to uh, it's got two USB C ports and one regular you know, USB A. And you know, again, ninety watts. I guess that's not enough for you, it's big not enough guy. For me. But, but uh, it's pretty good. It's I think half the price and half the size. Once again, same kind of thing. Dude, they're, they're definitely getting smaller. And Apple's, you know, Apple's got to start making. <laughs> they got to start competing with these things, right? And they can't keep charging more for you know. I, I guess it's technically it is more of a charger, but you don't want a bigger charger. Right. And I mean, I'm going to browser mode here again. This. <gasps> uh, Mode. This Alki, <laughs> this Alki charger is so much lighter than the Apple charger. This thing, if Apple doesn't start releasing something like this, this is going to absolutely kill the Apple charger re- or, or accessory market. I mean, why would anyone buy Apples if you could have this? This is half the size. It's lighter. You could put well, this in your pocket. Especially not included in the box anymore as well, right? So, well, with the MacBooks, they are. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I have to get iPhones and for stuff. For now. Yeah. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Just wait. Just right. wait. You want your bonus? Get rid of the MacBook charger. <laughs> I got a great idea, Tim. Wait for this. Um, in fact, <laughs> I was reading a story this week that <laughs> Apple is actually considering moving to gallium nitride in their bricks, their charging bricks, because it is so much more efficient. The current ones, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this as though I'm some kind of expert. I'm not. I just know what I've read. <laughs> the current ones use silicon silicon and which is why they're bigger and larger which are the same things some say, some people say and then you have these smaller <laughs> ones which are lighter smaller and tinier and uh they pump out more wattage 100 watts and i bet you they could go even higher than that but i think the limit of USB-C cables i think it's 100 watts which is why they can't go higher so finally there is a much better way to charge your macbook pro well, you could charge a tesla with that thing you could, yeah. It'd be ready two weeks after you started. <laughs> and only 100 watts, maybe maybe three weeks. Yeah. I love this thing, man. I, I, when I bought this, so I bought this. They didn't send it to me. Um, Anchor did send me this one, which has been great. So full disclosure, but it's been great. I use it to charge my iPhone all the time. Well, what but, do they say this? Anchor, then they're not going to send you anything else anymore. You know what? German I think they should probably change their name. Doesn't it just sound much more ele- elegant as Anka? Anka. Where's my Anka charger? I can't find it. <laughs> Tossing an umlaut and everything's fine. <laughs> they definitely need to put an umlaut in there somewhere. Um, yeah, and this Aoki, which I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Aki, is also a really nice charger. The question is, though, of course, like longevity. I mean, the one thing that Apple has nailed with their chargers is longevity. I don't think I've ever had an iPhone or a Mac charger die, but I have had third-party chargers die several times. Huh. So plus, they don't spontaneously burst into flames. <laughs> you mean you mean apples? Apple ones, yeah. I mean, they don't heat up. They don't. They don't. They don't melt down. You know, um, that's a, that's one of the things I was always worried about buying third-party chargers. Uh, they seem like a good deal, but you know, I was always a bit concerned that they're gonna. Middle of the night, they're going to burst into flames and turn the house down. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because MacBooks used to have, or MacBook Pros, used to have a dedicated Apple charger, right? But now that they charge via USB-C, there is not really any point to have a dedicated Apple charger because as long as someone follows the USB-C spec, they can create a charger for your MacBook, which is kind of cool, although I miss MagSafe. And... So I think I trust these a lot more now that I know that they're following some kind of universal spec, which is USB-C's charging spec. And um, I don't, these these were made in China, the same place that the uh, the Apple chargers made. Yeah, well, assembled in China. Well, so both both those means. brands are going gangbusters, aren't they? Okay, and Anchor. They're, I mean, they're, they're, they 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 started out. At, I mean, they, as far as I know, they've only been around a, a couple of years, and they were making sort of cheap cables on Amazon, and now they have a whole bunch of accessories and they're doing yeah. gangbusters. I mean, they um, they, uh, they seem to be, you know, they've become the, the big um, Apple accessory makers, 
you know, of uh, the moment. Yeah, especially when Apple moved to USB-C, their business has probably exploded, I would guess, because now all of a sudden you can buy any charger for your MacBook Pro or your Mac, right? You don't need to have Apple's charger. And like I said, this thing is, I think I bought this. This is the Aki that I'm holding, the 100-watt charger. I think I bought this for $30 on Amazon. $30! And and Apple's is 79 and that doesn't even include the USB-C cable. Now, this doesn't include the USB-C cable either, but... If you just get this and like a like a six foot or eight foot long USB C cable, then this is really all you need. You don't need to spend all that money on an Apple charger. So it's no longer a luxury to have an extra charger. You could just carry around this thing for thirty bucks, and it can literally charge your your all your devices if you wanted to. Or you could just bring your Mac and and then your your charge your iPhone and your Apple Watch off the chargers that plug into your your MacBook Pro. So there's there's more options than ever. That's a good thing. I just want to fill you guys in on this because. I think that Apple eventually is going to go from this big old brick to this tiny little brick, which is going to be good news for all of us because they're just going to be a lot smaller, easy to carry around. And as a wise man once said, that's all I'll have to say about buy it. I think we're officially out of Apple stories, Lewis. You got anything <laughs> you want to add before we wrap up? I think we're at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Good way, nice way of putting it there. True words have never been spoken. Well, we've been <laughs> we've we've been in that the bottom of that barrel for a while. Uh, all right, guys. Well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up then there. Then I think that's all the cult cast that we have for you guys this week. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I know there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot going on, and uh, it's cool to have all you guys here. Hopefully we, uh, hopefully you had a little bit of fun and got to take your mind off things for a little while. So. Uh, if you want to come reach out to us, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfon, E-R-F-O-N. Leander is at L. Kenny. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This has been the Coldcast, the best 30-plus minute app conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Coldcast come out every Thursday night. I'll thank everyone for listening and watching. And we'll see you govs mm, next time. Nice head bobbin there, Lewis. I'm doing moving, it too. You guys are both really doing it. Me, man. I'm going me. back to you guys so we can see the head bobbing. You guys are just like. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear the music? Yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. It's soothing, isn't I, it? Is it Mrs. Doubtfire music? Or, well, I don't get it. What's the. Uh... No, it's, it's not. Well, well, what's the Mrs. Doubtfire reference you make every time you start the show? Oh, it's just because when I do the hello, everyone thinks oh, it's Mrs. It's Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire voice. Yeah. I thought it was the music. Oh. <laughs> I thought you played a mean bass. <laughs> Lewis thought I was doing the music here live with my bass. I got a harmonica in my mouth. No, it's just playing. Did you compose this yourself? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> why you think that, but thank you. It is royalty free, though, right? I take yeah. it. I, I mean, yeah, I think so. Uh, totally free. Uh, you're totally going to get good. hit with a bill. Seven, seven year back. back <laughs> seven year backlog due. of royalties. <laughs> Well, on Spotify, that's like $18, so I think I can afford it. <laughs> All right, we're really leaving this time. Bye, guys. Huh. Frenetic ending.